We are one week through the MLB season, and pitchers are dropping like flies. Star pitchers Shane Bieber, Yuri Perez, and Spencer Strider all went down with UCL injuries in the first week. Then there are guys like Framber Valdez, Josiah Gray, and Nick Pavetta who all went down with unconfirmed elbow injuries this week. And with UCL injuries comes the dreaded Tommy John surgery, which takes pitchers on average 18 to 19 months to recover from. Pitchers are evolving and are better than ever, but with the increase in velocity and spin, we're also seeing an increase in severe injuries. What is happening to pitchers? And is there more to this story that we're all missing? A phrase a pitcher never wants to hear is Tommy John. Tommy John was a former four-time MLB All-Star pitcher. In 1975, Tommy John suffered a really serious injury to his elbow and couldn't throw for weeks. The team surgeon, Dr. Frank Job, took a deeper look into this and he noticed that John didn't have an ulnar collateral ligament, which is the band that connects the upper arm bone to the forearm bone. The UCL is a critical part of the kinetic chain that helps produce a pitch, but due to years of wear and tear on this, Tommy John no longer had the ligament left to even repair. Dr. Job got creative and took a ligament from John's wrist and used it as a UCL substitute in his left elbow. This surgery was successful, and John, after recovery, was able to return to play. This surgery allowed him to pitch 14 more years, as he was able to extend his career over 26 years from 1963 to 1989. Since he was the first person to ever have this procedure done, it was later named the Tommy John surgery. Despite looking like a rare case at the time, many pitchers have ended up damaging their UCL over time to the point where it needs to be replaced. This ended up being one of the most common and devastating injuries in sports over the last 50 years. 2,424 pitchers in the minor and major leagues have had Tommy John surgery at some point in their career. What started as just a handful of pitchers getting this procedure done has skyrocketed to now at least 100 pitchers in the MLB and minor leagues each year. In 2015, it was at an all-time high, with 171 surgeries. Last season, the Dodgers had 15 pitchers on their roster that had this surgery at a point in their career. In 2024, around a quarter of active pitchers have had the surgery at least once in their career. With all this information, we want to know why this is happening and how we can prevent getting surgery in the first place. The MLB Players Association came out with a statement recently that the pitch clock has something to do with the increased rate in UCL injuries. However, there's no proof that this is true. UCL injuries have not increased since the pitch clock has been implemented, despite it seeming like it. In addition, MLB has been working on a comprehensive study with John Hopkins University where they've found no evidence that the pitch clock has increased injuries. In fact, they've also found no evidence to support the pitchers who worked quickly are more likely to sustain this injury. Although, what was found in this study is that there's a statistically significant correlation between miles per hour and spin rate on UCL injuries. And who is this affecting the most? The power throwing starting pitchers. Over the last four seasons, 13 of the top 17 starting pitchers in average fastball speed have had Tommy John surgery at some point in their career. Seven of them had it or a form of a UCL reconstruction surgery more than once. Unfortunately, if you're a hard throwing pitcher who pitches a lot of innings, the chances of you damaging your UCL is extremely high. Another factor that comes into play in causing this injury is mechanics. The key mechanical flaw that leads to this damage, as noted by Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez, is pitchers who fly open their front leg and do not keep it on a 45 degree angle as they step towards home plate. This movement causes extra stress on their elbow trying to throw the ball. Listen to Pedro explain this. You go and you, you, you land in a 45 degree. And instead, this kid is open this way. It goes that way, this goes, and this gets exposed and doesn't have the time to get properly on top like it should. He gets down here, so all the stress and pronating that arm to bring the ball over, that's what causes the stress in the ligaments. Powerful pitchers who grip the ball hard and fly open are extreme risks for elbow injury, and Pedro Martinez has been able to predict for years which guys will be next. Like, in 2020, 
He saw these flaws in Casey Mize's mechanics and said that if he didn't fix it, he might end up with Tommy John. Sure enough, he was right. And in 2022, Casey Mize injured his UCL and had Tommy John surgery. Teams need more people like Pedro analyzing mechanics to prevent this from happening. But having Tommy John is not always a career-ending injury. Overall, if the surgery is successful, there's enough evidence that suggests pitchers will come back and return to form. The American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine did a study where they found pitchers returning from this surgery have actually seen an improvement in many on-field metrics. A few examples in recent memory include Zach Wheeler, who had it twice in his early 20s, but now in his 30s has become a perennial Cy Young candidate, and has actually improved his velocity and movement since before the surgery. Or how Justin Verlander, who at 38 had Tommy John, but in his first season back at 39, he went 18 and four with the league best 1.75 ERA and 0.829 whip, won the Cy Young and won the World Series. At 39, after the most severe injury a pitcher could have, Verlander had arguably the best season of his career. Although nobody wants Tommy John surgery, if a pitcher is able to recover right and not have any complications, this surgery can give them a huge second chance. But there are still many concerns. The Tommy John cases seem like they're even worse now because of all the big names that are getting it. In baseball now, we're seeing less and less soft throwing pitchers who pitch to contact, paint corners, and dominate. Instead, we're seeing guys who throw gas and have a ton of movement emerge as the top pitchers in the game. It makes sense because coming up in high school and college, pitchers want to stand out. Teams draft players for upside, and of course, a guy who throws 100 with crazy movement will have more upside than a guy who throws low 90s and relies on accuracy. This riskier style of pitching has led players to get where they are today, and many of the top pitchers of today have had Tommy John at some point. Here are four of the top active pitchers who have had Tommy John surgery at some point in their career. Spencer Strider, Zach Wheeler, Justin Verlander, and Jacob deGrom. And here are the top pitchers who haven't ever undergone Tommy John surgery. Garrett Cole, Corbin Burns, Zach Gallen, and Blake Snell. We actually polled our audience to see which group was better, and it seems that you all believe the group of all Tommy John pitchers is better by a landslide. And this list wasn't even including many MVPs and Cy Young winners, such as Shohei Otani, Shane McClanahan, Shane Bieber, and Sandy Alcantara, just to name a few. And this is the major problem. So many of the best pitchers in baseball go through this injury, and it's viewed as normal because this is how they were taught to pitch. Justin Verlander put it all into perspective when he was asked about the rise of injuries among pitchers. You know, everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can and um, spinning the ball as hard as they possibly can. And, um, you know, it's hard to deny those results, obviously. A double-edged sword, how can you tell somebody to go out there and not do that when they're capable of throwing 100? And, and you know, this, this, this young guy comes up and throws a pitch 95 and gives up a big homer, and everybody's like, what the hell, man? Um, so something needs to change. Unfortunately, he's right. The data suggests that pitchers should pitch like this. And why wouldn't they? Starting pitchers now rarely even make it a third time through the order, so they're incentivized to throw their hardest and spin the ball as much as they can while they're in. And for unproven pitchers who are just trying to make a name for themselves, the reward may outweigh the risk. The best pitchers in the game are constantly changing since at any moment an elite pitcher will get this injury and be out for at least one full season. When fans go to a baseball game using code AWC on SeatGeek to get great tickets for $20 off, they might not even see their favorite pitcher pitch, since chances are he's hurt. Teams and fans hate to see this, and there has to be more research done to find ways to prevent it. Mechanical approaches like Pedro Martinez has pointed out have to be researched deeper. Conditioning and recovery approaches have to be researched deeper. Right now, there is not much reliable information I can find on recovery, but here's the most interesting take from Trevor Bauer. If you were asked to walk a mile, you could probably do it every single day and not be sore. If you train like that for a month 
and then tried to run five miles as fast as you could, your body would probably feel awful for many days afterwards. Now, let's say you train for a month by running 10 miles every day as fast as you can. At the end of the month, you're asked to run five miles as fast as you can. The day after the five mile run, you're probably going to feel great because it was less stressful than your normal training. Apply the same concept to baseball. I think of soreness as the difference between the stress level of my training and the stress level of competition. If you want less soreness, increase your level of training. That might be worth looking into for organizations. This idea by Trevor Bauer has a lot of logic behind it, and it might not be for everyone, especially pitchers with poor mechanics, but the idea of conditioning your elbow and the rest of your arm to get used to feeling the max intensity is a good idea for future research. But again, we should take this all with a grain of salt, because I'm not an expert. Finally, when in doubt, look at the data and find trends. A study published in the Orthopedic Journal of Sports Medicine looked at data from pitchers 15 games prior to them having to undergo Tommy John surgery, and what they found was pitch velocity decreased for four-seam fastballs, two-seam fastballs, and sliders as the game number approached the injury date. There was a positive association between spin rate and percentage of curveballs thrown, indicating an increase in spin rate and curveball usage. However, there was a negative association between spin rate and four-seam fastballs, indicating a decrease in spin rate for this pitch type over the observed period. The conclusion drawn from these findings is that there's a discernible pattern in pitch statistics leading up to Tommy John surgery. While individual changes in these metrics may be small from game to game, monitoring these trends could potentially help identify players at risk and mitigate the need for Tommy John surgery and more data like this needs to be observed. With technology and sports advancing at the rate it is, MLB needs to put as much resources as they can into being able to detect these injuries early or prevent them from happening at all. Too many star pitchers are missing time, and this is becoming one of MLB's biggest problems. Subscribe if you hate injuries.